worship on this first Sunday of June, Pentecost Sunday. We have ended, or we have come to the end of the season of Easter and now into Pentecost, which some see as the birth of the church and others see as the time when the Spirit comes down upon us. And so we come together once again across the miles in community for worship, for worship in a virtual space. And we thank you for being here. And, and we want you to know how important you are to us and how important this time has been for us. But we also need your help to continue on with this. We know how important it is to offer ourselves in a virtual presence for those who may not be able to make it here on a Sunday or for those who just um, due to distance can't get to this community and yet feel like they're still a part of it. And so we, we need resources of time, talent and treasure to ensure that we have the equipment and we're able to continue to provide life-giving and, and inspired worship to you. If this is your first time joining us online, thank you for being here. If you've been with us for the longest, almost two, over two years now, we thank you and know how important your presence is and has been with us. It's also Pride Sunday that we come together on this day celebrating Pentecost. And so for Pentecost and Pride, let us bring all that we are this day together in worship. We light this flame to ignite our hearts and our minds, the spark of knowledge that enlightens, the shimmering hope that burns, the blazing love that engulfs our actions, the bonfire of our commitment. We light this flame for those who celebrate themselves, who fear, who hope, who persevere, who stand on the side of love for all. We light this flame for those who have been ridiculed, that they may find peace, for those who have fought to marry, that they may celebrate for those who live in uncertainty in the world, that they may find hope. We light this flame to renew our commitment that no one shall ever again suffer for the right to love. We light this flame to celebrate the kaleidoscope of diversity, working, loving, and living on the side of love. We light this flame to always remind us that the divine is with us, that the spirit of the divine has been given to us, and that we are filled with divine love. For this, we light this flame. Please join me in the call to worship. All you who delight in the sacred strange, come and worship the queer creator. Thanks be to God who blesses the peculiar and rejoices in the uniqueness of every body and being. The holy takes on flesh in every gender and sexual orientation, every race and ability, every body size and every body type. Each embodied difference is a unique glimpse of holy wonder. Blessed are those who search for God among the lives of the oppressed, the betrayed, the turned away, and the condemned. Blessed are those who receive with joy the gifts of God enfleshed among us. The sacred is with us. Let us worship and be transformed. Let us worship knowing that the spirit of live, love, inclusion, and acceptance is sent down on us today and every day.
Our Creator, this prayer is in violet. The violet of suffragettes, gender activists, and non-binary living reveal the fears that keep us and others captive through inequality and self-centership. Give us the courage to lay down new paths of freedom, expression, integrity, and enfranchisement. Our Creator, this prayer is in blue. The blue of water, Mother Mary, and open skies. Your children need clean water to drink and safe skies beneath which to grow. Help us to resist the impulse to poison communities in the earth for short-sighted gain. We recognize it is the most vulnerable in our communities who bear the brunt of our greed and warring ways. Our Creator, this prayer is in green. Green of shoots and common time, the green of primordial algae and the hard work of growing food. When we despair, when we see only desolate landscape ahead, rise up within and among us to call us forward to a new tenacity. Make us fierce with life and determination and teach us to grow strong and true with the force of love. Our creator, this prayer is in yellow. The yellow of sunlight blessing all of creation and the coolness of moonlit nights. The yellow of happiness, intellect, and instinctual gifts. In celebrating your abundance and care for all, give us the resolve to develop ourselves and our communities to our highest potential of generosity, mutuality, achievement, and joy. Grow our awareness to include creation care and the opportunity for all life to thrive as part of our sacred purpose. Our creator, this prayer is an orange. Orange, the surprise, the orange of surprise and inbreaking, the orange of volcanoes and fire, the orange of saffron robes and undeniable presence. Awaken us to new insights and push, put fresh ground beneath our feet. Help us learn from our experiences and struggle to walk as harbingers of a better and kinder world. Our Creator, this prayer is in red. the red of life's blood and survival, the red of sensuality, sexuality, struggle, and passion, the red of wine and revolution, the red of birth and death. Give us the will to embody your vision of a just and loving world with every cell of our being. Give us the courage of our rainbow ancestors to live and love with pride. In your many names we pray, amen. pray. Loving God, we are glad that you have drawn us together again. We come as a motley people from a motley world, seeking your amazing and abundant love which is radically inclusive. We pray with thankfulness for those prayers you have already answered and with hearts of hope for those things yet to be. O Holy One, we express our gratitude as we rejoice as a community that our pride is found in you. Thank you for our celebration as an expression of our joy and love. 
May our pride always be a reflection of appreciation for who it is you have created us to be. Bless our differences as a source of our strength and a sign of our respect for one another. Bless our calls for equality, inclusivity, and freedom that we may both hear and speak and act and work for your vision of justice and of peace. Thank you for being ever faithful in hearing and answering our prayers. We pray now for our world, our leaders, our community, our church. We lift up to you our loved ones we name silently before you. We praise you, O God, for hearing us and calling us to come on to you, for meeting us wherever we are and taking us further than we dreamed. We thank you and we pray to you in the power of the Spirit, knowing that you listen to us always. Amen.
So today, we don't have time for all ages, I'm very, very excited because we're going to do one of my favorite things, which is to do a puzzle. And I know you're probably going like, oh, that's, that's kind of a, a, a little kid's puzzle. But it is, and that's okay because it's still a puzzle and I still like doing it. And there's a reason we're going to do it because we're going to try and, you know, make sure we get all the pieces in the puzzle. And so I'm going to start, okay, so this one, which is uh, this guy. And he goes, oh, yeah, he fits right in there, so. I like these ones with the little handles on them because it's easy to get them in. Um, it makes it easier for me. Um, so let's see, what's this one? Oh, let's see this one here. I think it's gonna go right below that one. Yep, that's where it goes. And this is cute because it's got two little, it's got a sheep and, and a little lamb. And, and so that goes, that goes here. Okay. And then I'm gonna, oh, look it. There's a, a swan with its little baby. Um, let's see, that goes over here. Yep. And then I'm going to see, when my kids were little, this was known as a moo cow. It wasn't a cow, it was a moo cow, because you had to say what it, the sound it made along with the cow. So where's the moo cow go? We're gonna see where the moo cow goes. Oh, uh, the moo cow, okay. Uh, yep, yep, that's where the moo cow goes. So, now, let's see this. This is, uh, okay, and I think that goes here. Well, it, it, it kinda goes there, but doesn't, doesn't, doesn't go there. That's where I think it should go. That's where I want it to go. But it doesn't go there, so you know what? If that doesn't go where I want it to go, we're just gonna get rid of that one. So now we have this next one, which is the chicken and the chick, and that goes, uh, that goes here. And now we have a donkey. I think, we go, okay, that goes there. Okay, so um, I've got all the pieces in, and so now we're done, aren't we? We're finished, the puzzle's done. It's not done. Oh, well, yeah, but I mean, it is done, but it's not done. And it's not done because the piece that I thought goes here, that should have gone here, I just got rid of because it didn't go where I expected it to go. It wasn't what I expected it to be, and it didn't fit where I wanted it to fit, so I got rid of it. And this one, well, that one's just not here at all, and that's, that's, that's okay, because it, it's not here. But the problem is now, it's incomplete. Not everything is here. So, does the same thing happen when we get rid of communities because they don't fit, or people because they don't fit where we think they should fit in society? What happens when we tell people, well, you need to fit here, and if you don't fit here, if you don't meet my expectations, if you don't fit where I think you need to fit, then we're gonna get rid of you. Then you're not gonna be part of my life, then you're done. And what happens when pieces are just completely gone and not even there? Does it matter? Well, yeah, it matters because the whole picture, we're missing pieces. That's what happens in our lives and in our world when we get rid of people because they don't fit where we think they should fit. Or when pieces or whole parts of our community are just missing. We have an incomplete picture of God's beautiful creation in all of its diversity. And that's sad. And so now, maybe we need to start to think about people fitting where they fit, not where we think they should fit. People acting the way that feels right for who they are, not the way we think that they should act. That's what's important. So think about that. The next time you do a puzzle, when you try to put a piece in that doesn't fit where it's supposed to go, think about that. Think about what happens when we do that to people, because we do do that to people. Talk to you next time at our Time for All Ages. Our reading this morning is from Acts chapter 2, verses 1 to 21. A gust of wind blasted through the house in Jerusalem. 
The disciples jumped up from the table. Andrew grabbed the bread. John and James grabbed the cups. The tablecloth flew into the air. Plates crashed to the floor. The disciples were celebrating the festival of Pentecost, but now their meal was a mess. Andrew dropped the bread in surprise. A flame of fire floated over each disciple's head. The flames were bright red, orange, and yellow, but they weren't hot. Andrew pointed to the flames. Look! The disciples looked. John and James dropped the cups. Peter and Simon's eyes grew wide. Bartholomew's and Philip's mouths dropped open. Matthew, Thomas, and Matthias gasped. Thaddeus and the other James pointed to Andrew's head. You have a flame too. Suddenly the disciples began to speak in different languages, Latin, Greek, Arabic, all the languages of the world. They rushed outside. We are filled with God's spirit, shouted Matthew. God is the ruler of all, Philip explained, exclaimed. The street filled with Jewish people from many countries who were celebrating Pentecost in Jerusalem. Every person, no matter where they had come from, heard the disciples speaking about God's power in their own language. The people couldn't believe their ears. Some in the crowd sneered. They could not believe that the disciples could actually speak all the languages, but many other people were amazed. Peter yelled, each of you hears our words in your own language. God's spirit has made this possible. Hear what the spirit is saying to the church. Thanks be to God. Today we heard the familiar piece of scripture from Acts where the disciples are gathered together in that room with the doors closed. The events unfolded during the week or during the feast of weeks or Shabbat as some of us might know it. It's a time when all persons who were able were required to come to Jerusalem to the temple to provide an offering at the temple of God, an offering of, of what they had grown, what the, the world or the the ground had provided for them. And it took place exactly 50 days after the Feast of First Fruits, which took place during Passover. But these individuals are once again alone in that room. And at this point, the Holy Spirit comes upon them with this gust of wind and then the appearance of those flames. The people outside who have come to Jerusalem from all of the known world to come to the temple hear those words that are spoken in their own languages and, and they are amazed. And they're amazed in some versions that they accuse those gathered of being drunk on the new wine. And so this morning in our scripture reading we hear the familiar story of the coming of the Holy Spirit. But today here in Winnipeg, it's much more than just Pentecost. It's also Pride Sunday. And so how might the two be connected? So I'm going to start off by saying that the scripture to the story that we read today is actually from the children's Bible. And it was chosen because it gives the story without a whole lot of challenging names that in trying to pronounce them, we lose the thread of the story itself. And so it gives us the story in a way that it's easy for us to hear. So I'm going to be a little bit cheeky here right now, and this version of the story that we heard this morning is one of the most pride versions that I've ever heard. Why, might you ask? Well, those who are gathered together are all sitting down to eat together, and we know that it's morning because in other versions of this story, they're accused of being drunk on the new wine early in the day. Well, I can't even tell you how many times I have gone out to brunch before Pride. It is such a Pride thing to do. Go for brunch and then go to the festival. I wonder if that's what they were doing. Brunching together, but then going to the festival. But I digress. How might these two come together? The story of Pentecost and Pride. One of the important pieces of the Pentecost story is the idea that those who are gathered together begin to speak in other languages, and those outside heard them. 
It's important for us to remember that those who were gathered together in that house were marginalized persons in society. They were the ones who had followed the rebel, who kept talking about this new way, the way of love and compassion and mercy. The one who was ultimately killed by the powers of the day. Yet those who were outside heard them. And that is something that's really important. In reality, those who were outside that house could have been so focused on their own lives, their own need to offer sacrifice at the festival, their own minds being consumed with what they were doing at that exact moment, that they could have had their ears closed to what was happening around them. Yes, those who were gathered together in a house were speaking in different languages, but just as important is the fact that those around them heard them, had their ears open to the movement of the Spirit so that they could hear. Today, Pride Sunday, let us think about and focus on that aspect opening our ears so that we might hear those who have been marginalized and continue to be marginalized in our world today? Are we hearing the voices of trans members of our community and especially trans persons of color who are more likely to be murdered because of who they are? Are we hearing the voices of those in other countries who are still jailed and executed because of their sexual orientation or gender identity or gender expression? Are we hearing the voices of those who are crying out in the face of legislation that continues to marginalize the LGBTQ and Two-Spirit communities, such as the Don't Say Gay bills and all of the anti-trans legislation? that is passed around the world? Are we just hearing the voices, or are we hearing the voices of the LGBTQ and Two-Spirit communities on their experiences of marginalization, hatred, homophobia, biphobia, and transphobia in our world and in their lives today? Are our ears open? Or are we so busy focusing on our own lives that we can't, don't, or don't want to hear what is happening around us? There are two parts to our Pentecost story. Those marginalized ones who begin to find their voices and speak, and those who hear them. Are we hearing the voices of the marginalized communities around us, because if we are not, then maybe we need to open our ears and listen to their cries for justice and inclusion and acceptance, just as they are right now. This is what pride is all about. It is about justice inclusion, safety, and acceptance for all people who exist in wondrous diversity. And so this Pride Sunday, this Pentecost Sunday, let us be those out on the streets who had their, hear, their ears open to hear the words that were being spoken. Let us be open to the movement of the Spirit in its wondrous, diverse forms in the many different ways in which it comes. Let us truly hear the voices of our LGBTQ and Two-Spirit communities so that we might feel the Spirit moving in them and in us, as we are all part of God's wondrous creation. Let us listen now, on this day, let us truly listen.
gathered your communion elements, I invite you to pause the video and, and grab your communion elements as we come to God's table together. The Holy One be with you, and also with you. Open your hearts to the One who is love. We open our hearts to you, O God. Let us give thanks to God, our Creator, for the courage of the Holy One that lives in us, we give thanks. Bold and beloved one, throughout history you revealed yourself to us in ways that surprise and disrupt. You shocked the world when you came to us as a vulnerable baby born into a family fleeing political persecution. Though the scandal of your embodiment in Jesus led to crucifixion, still your spirit of new life is birthed among the marginalized. You live among us today. The lives of black trans women whose experiences of violence are dismissed and ignored. Among bisexual people living with HIV and AIDS. As babies born into the care of lesbian women. You wander school halls as trans children and navigate the streets as queer couples walking hand in hand. You come to us as the LGBTQIA plus and two-spirit youth with no home. You are embodied by two-spirit people still fighting against the impacts of colonization, erasure, and stolen land. At times, we are offended by your self-expression. You take on the flesh, on flesh in people, places, and ideas that we have been taught to fear or despise. And so we struggle. Our hearts harden, our hospitality recoils. But still, your love persists. Through beauty, compassion, and truth, you lure us into laying down our need to control. You move us, free us, embrace us, Heal us. We offer up to you this day. In response, those in this community whom we hope feel the healing of your presence with them. As we pray today for Marlene, Liam, Ailey, Sinead, Rob, Bev, Betty, Liam, Bev, Lori, Anne. Krista, and Ken. We also lift up to you the family of Bernice Fanning on her passing. We continue to hold in our thoughts and our prayers the people of Ukraine as they continue to fight this war that they did not ask for, the invading of another country into their sovereign nation, knowing that all they want is to dictate their own future, their own path their own country. We pray for all people who are subject to violence around the world, marginalization and aggression, especially the LGBTQIA plus and two-spirit people of this world. We pray for all refugees, all people who have been forced to flee due to marginalization, violence, in their own homes. We lift up, continue to lift up all of the victims, all the families of the victims of the shooting at Robb Elementary School in Texas, and we pray for the healing of that community. We also lift up to you in praise and thanksgiving, a prayer of celebration for all people who will be graduating this spring. And we also pray in thanks for the beautiful flowers on our communion table this day in memory of Arlene and Tom Young. By your grace, we are brought into the sacred labors of justice and transformation. We become free in Christ to reject all evil and oppression. Like those who gather on Jesus, with Jesus on the night of his arrest, we come in need of grace. After feasting with his companions, Jesus then took the bread. He blessed it and he broke it, giving it to them all and said, this is my body, which is given for you. Take, eat, and remember me. 
After supper, he did the same thing with the cup. Saying this is a symbol of the new covenant. Drink in remembrance of me. In remembering the life of Jesus, we remember what he showed us. The love of God is public. The love of God is intentional. The love of God is explicit. And so we pray that you pour out the Spirit on this bread and this cup, O God. Through these gifts, open our hearts to encounters with Christ in the strange and the ordinary. May the bread of life and the cup of blessing strengthen us in our courage to live as Jesus lived. Amen. All is ready. Everyone, everyone is welcome at God's table. the bread of life. The cup of the new covenant. Let us pray. Nourishing one, your gifts renew us in body, spirit, and mind. Through this taste of love, may the Spirit send us with a faith that is brave. Let no institution or narrow thinking hold us back. Make us people who boldly pursue collective justice and tend gently to the world's pain.
Red is for life in all its forms. Orange is for healing. Yellow is for sunlight and all kinds of light. Green is for nature and all her diversity. Blue is for harmony. And purple is for the spirit which guides us all. We are called to practice this rainbow of colors in our lives, in the conversations and interactions in our lives, at home, at work, and at play, as we go out into our community and the world to share the message that God's love is for everyone.